This Bible, printed in the Lakota language, holds a special place in the guest family history. Passed down from generation to generation, it represents a cherished connection to their Lakota heritage. The title, Watanin Washde, translates to good news, reflecting the significance of this religious text. Yeah, there, there are not too many speakers of the Lakota or Dakota language. It is a religious text, mm -hmm. it's a gospels and, and psalms. This Bible was published in New York City by the Bible Society around 1890. It's part of a series of Bibles in Native American languages. The rarity and pristine condition of this Bible makes it a fascinating and valuable piece with an estimated insurance value of $500. Oh, wow. Cool. I don't even know what to say. The guest brought H.F. Farney watercolor and gouache painting. She inherited it from her grandmother. Of course, the painting was done by N.F. Farney. He was an American artist born in France who was inspired by the American West. His painting captures Native American culture with detail and color. It's a valuable historical record of indigenous traditions. This artwork symbolizes respect for Native Americans, which includes cultural preservation and resilience. Overall, it's a tribute to a vanishing way of life. The appraiser values it at... 200000 to 300000 I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I always see people that say, I can't believe it, but I, but I can't believe it, but it's wonderful. Our guest bought this stunning piece, a Dom Nancy vase which holds a rich history. She inherited it from her mother, who purchased it 60 to 65 years ago at an auction for under $200. The appraiser reveals the hidden signature on the bottom. That tells us that this is a dome piece from France. The Dom Nancy vase is crafted in the late 19th to early 20th century. Originally known for the usage of household items, the Dom brothers transitioned into creating exquisite art glass like this vase. The piece features intricate acid-cut floral designs, gilding, and enamel work. Standing at an impressive 25 inches tall, this sunshine yellow vase is considered monumental. Its rarity and craftsmanship value it at eighteen dollars to $25,000, the higher end representing its retail value. <laughs> I always see people that say, I can't believe it, but I, but I can't believe it, but it's wonderful. Now? Now. Steve, it, oh, my heavens. That's amazing. A teapot was presented by the guest, acquired from her aunt, who had received it as a gift from her neighborhood. The appraiser identified the teapot as a piece by the Gorham Company, stamped with a date code indicating it was made in 1886. It was made of mixed metals like copper with silver and exhibited scenes influenced by an aesthetic movement in Japanese art technique had a technique called Shibayama, which was a mixture of bronze with other metals. The piece was an extraordinary and rare find. It also had an unusual top with a silver finial and insulators on the side to keep the handle from getting hot. Because of the influence of Japanese art on this, Japan was a closed society until the 1860s when Commodore Perry forced them to open their borders. However, the teapot's condition was not ideal. The appraiser estimated its value to be... $3,000 to $5,000 range. Now? Now. Steve, it, oh my heavens. That's amazing. This guest and the appraiser were both Eagle Scouts. They both understood the sentimental value of the uniform. Eagle Scout is a prestigious rank among U.S. Boy Scouts, with only 4% of Scouts reaching it. Returning to the uniform, the guest collects scouting memorabilia and found this uniform in a mail auction. The appraiser pointed out additional items like old membership cards and washing instructions. And I wanted a world-class uniform, so I saw this in a mail auction, right. and uh, I didn't really know what kind of condition it was going to be in. The guest bought the uniform for $300 at auction. 
The appraiser valued the uniform and accompanying items at around $2,000, much to the guest's delight. <laughs> Fantastic. These remarkable scrolls entered the guest family possession following the passing of a relative. Found rolled up in a box in the home, their beauty and significance were a delightful surprise. The scrolls depict Mr. Gu Chun Li and Madam Li, identified by inscriptions on the side as important figures. Both are ancestor portraits, as indicated by inscriptions stating their deceased status. These portraits, likely from the 1820s, blend the cultural heritage. Qing's were Manchurian people, whereas the Ming aristocracy were Han. Symbolism abounds in the scrolls, with cranes symbolizing long life and typically associated with female aristocrats, and phoenixes representing the empress. These scrolls are meant to be displayed prominently on a wall and are valued at fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Really, pair of lovely. <laughs> brought a Garcia and Company humidor to the show, which she inherited from her parents. A Garcia and Company humidor is a cigar storage box. It was invented by Angel Garcia, a renowned craftsman in the field of cigar accessories. Unique features include a specialized lining for humidity regulation, such as a hygrometer for monitoring humidity levels. The humidor also has a secure seal to prevent air leakage preserving the flavor, aroma, and texture of cigars. I can only imagine the smell, the wonderful smell you got when you opened up the back and the smell of these fresh cigars would come out. Symbolically, it represents craftsmanship and appreciation for cigars. The appraiser values it at... $4,000 to $6,000. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I can't believe it. A doll passed down through the family. It's special because it was a gift to the guest mom on her eighth birthday from a store in Dallas, Texas. The doll's happy face probably caught her eye, making it her favorite. It's a German bisque doll with big, round eyes and a soft, fluffy wig. There are marks on the back saying it was made in Germany by John D. Kestner, which is important, and this is quite unusual. It's the largest googly they've ever produced, resembling what could be the original romper-style suit. Even though it doesn't have its original clothes, it's still nice with its papier-mâché body and good-quality bisque. The doll is rare because of its size and type, which were popular long ago. The family remembers someone saying it might be worth $700, but they were surprised to find out it could actually be worth much, much more like twelve to $13,000. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> the guest presents a painting by Catherine Cherry. Cherry was a prominent early 20th century artist who received a gold medal at the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair. She transitioned from floral ceramics to formal training under notable artists and spent her career in St. Louis, frequently exhibiting her work. Went into formal training where she studied under Richard Miller, who's also a St. Louis notable artist. The guest had been following Cherry's work for a while and finally seized the opportunity to buy a piece from a local boutique gallery 10 years ago. The work is an oil-on-canvas board, likely painted in the 1920s, depicting a Gloucester harbor scene. It's unsigned, but with Cherry's characteristic style and it has documentation on the back verifying its authenticity. It's an impressionistic painting, and it's just beautifully executed and in wonderful condition. Cherry's works focus on floral objects and her summer travels to Gloucester, where the scene was likely painted. The appraiser estimates the value of the painting to be two to $3,000 at auction. Wow, that's excellent. brought the Christie poster to the auction. This poster features Christie Girl as one of the Red Cross nurses who were crucial in helping people during the 1918 flu epidemic. Howard Chandler was a famous American artist and illustrator of the early 19th century. The thing about Christie's work is that he was so popular and his work was in such demand that when they printed these posters, they probably printed hundreds of thousands. These posters were distributed all across America. As Christie Girl was a famous character of the illustrator, 
her posters were quite popular in the era. However, the poster the guest brought wasn't in great shape. It had stains and creases. The appraiser estimated the worth of the poster to be around six to nine hundred dollars at auction. This iconic image, a poster of the SS Normandy, is a symbol of 20th century art. Many recognize it, even if they're unsure why. Surprisingly, the owner's sister found this treasure in the trash in East Tennessee. She had several and graciously let the owner choose. SS Normandy is a famous ship from the 1930s Art Deco era. It's depicted in this poster. The artist, Cassandre, was a renowned French graphic designer known for creating posters. This Normandy poster was printed in 1935, and its value has been fetched upwards at auction multiple times. Highlighting its value and desirability among collectors, it could easily sell for $10,000. The owner is pleasantly surprised by the poster's worth and the story behind its discovery. The guest brought a cherished family heirloom, a homespun linen coverlet, to the show. The coverlet is an American-made piece of homespun linen, likely woven on a narrow loom due to the central seam. The dated inscription of 1796 makes it a particularly rare and early example of a textile, especially from the United States. Guest describes their grandfather always having them show off the coverlet to guest, highlighting its sentimental value. The coverlet is made of two halves sewn together and features charming figures next to a horse. While there is some staining, foxing, minor holes, and missing fringe, the appraiser believes restoration is possible. The appraiser mentions the difference between homespun linen and 19th century quilts or jacquard coverlets. Despite the condition issue, the appraiser sees restoration potential. The appraiser estimates the value of the coverlet to be in the range of ten to fifteen thousand dollars, surprising the guest. The collection of porcelain trinkets, known as Geldenscheissens, has been passed down through generations, starting with the guest grandmother in 1905. These trinkets were traditionally given for good luck to people buying new homes in Germany. Guest collection includes pieces found by their mother and themselves. Most of these trinkets were made in the Dresden area of Germany around 1905. The chamber pot was, at that time, an essential everyday part of life. And it's not a pleasant thing to use. Sold as inexpensive objects at state fairs and general stores. Each trinket features whimsical scenes related to the chamber pot, a common household item of the time often adding a humorous touch to an otherwise mundane object. The individual pieces range from $25 to $75, making them a valuable and unique collection of antique trinkets. The collection's value is estimated to be between seven and $900. Mm -hmm, very nice. Wow. Ah, that is so exciting. The guest inherited this painting of blue bonnets from her great-grandmother, dating back to the 1940s. The painter, Porfirio Salinas, gained fame for his blue bonnet paintings and even caught the attention of President Lyndon Johnson. Blue bonnet painters were in high demand in Texas, and during the 1920s, there was a Texas wildflower art competition held for three years. Salinas, a Mexican-American, achieved success despite lacking formal training. He painted various artworks but the majority of his pieces, numbering in the thousands, predominantly featured the same style of blue bonnets. The appraiser estimates the auction value of the painting to be between ten dollars to $15,000 and suggests an insurance value as high as... $18,000? Wow! Ah! That is so exciting! Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you very much. The guest showcased a Civil War hat, image, and canteen, which belonged to her husband's great-grandfather, Thomas George Washington Jefferson. He served in the Civil War from New Haven, Connecticut. The guest recounted the significant family history related to the canteen. The appraiser discussed the uniqueness of the Confederate canteen, which was handmade. It had a wood body with an engraved date and location, along with the original cotton sling and tin roller buckle. The other item... The hat represented Thomas's membership in the Grand Army of the Republic. The front of the hat 
It has the GAR wreath. The hat also had signs of wear. The value estimated for both items was... $6,000 to $6,500. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you very much. The clock was presented by the guest, who acquired it from his grandmother. Originally, the clock belonged to the guest aunt, who received it as a gift on her birthday in 1941. The clock had an unusual dome shape and was very heavy. The appraiser identified it as made of alabaster with an uncommon format. The clock had interesting coloring which resembled clouds in the sky. The guest explained the clock's operation. It tells time in a unique manner, with 15-minute intervals marked between the numerals. Moreover, the clock winds with a key at the top. When it's fully wound, it would run for a full cycle of eight days. The appraiser estimated the worth of this unique item? $150 and $650. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm very surprised at that. God, it's incredible. I had no idea. The guest inherited a Roy Lichtenstein screen print from her late husband, who purchased it for $80. The iridescent effect, I mean, yeah. it's kind of interesting. I looked up Lichtenstein, and I saw that he did a lot of, like, very large posters. The piece is a screen print on mirrored colored Rolux, which gives it an optical effect. This specific print was made in 1966 and was part of an edition, and only one other example exists. Lichtenstein was renowned for his use of Ben Day dots and his appropriation of comic book scenes. It exemplifies his endeavor towards originality. The print is signed in felt-tip pen and numbered from an edition of 70. The guest print is one of the few surviving examples. Given its rarity and originality, the print commands a value of... For around $20,000. Oh, my God. It's incredible. I had no idea. Wow. Yes, it, it's just... unbelievable. Collect his love. This guest presented a carving that was inherited from her husband's grandfather. The carving was the work of famed carver John Haley Bellamy. Bellamy is one of the most renowned carvers of the 19th century and of the 20th century. He carved many objects, but this white eagle was his specialty, and it was commonly called the Bellamy Eagle. The carving had the words, Remember the Maine, which is a slogan to commemorate the 266 crew members of the U.S. Marine battleship that, that died in an explosion in 1898. The piece was appraised in 1960 for $250. But in 2019, the Bellamy Eagle has become a collector's most prized possession, and it was now worth $35,000 to $45,000. Wow. Yes, it, it's just unbelievable. Collector's love, the remember the main. It's one of his more popular uh, sayings. So congratulations. Oh, thank you so it's... much. <laughs> Here we have a childhood portrait of this guest ancestor from the 1840s painter of this piece is unknown, as paintings like these were usually done by traveling painters. But what we do know for sure is that the family of this little child was wealthy. In those days, paying for portraits like this was a luxury. The child's smug look, the silver rattle in his hand, and the giant silver medallion around his neck further confirms the family's affluence. The appraiser valued this original portrait, at eight to twelve thousand dollars, but for insurance, he estimated that the piece could be insured for twelve to twenty thousand dollars. That really surprises me. This guest family was invited to a family event in Appleton, Wisconsin, in 1965, where George Ornstein was also present. As a party favor, George Ornstein handed out signed autographs of the Beatles. The Beatles are one of the greatest English bands, and George Ornstein was their manager. Her little sister, Jean, who missed the event, wrote a letter to George Ornstein, who then sent this autograph, signed by every member of the Beatles, and a letter from himself. The picture was signed with the words, For Jean. In 1965, the Beatles were everyone's heartthrob, so this letter was a treasured gift. Robert Whittaker, a renowned English photographer, took the photograph. 
This particular picture was part of a series of photos taken for their 1965 album cover. What was an adorable, kind gesture to little Jean in 1965 is now worth ten to fifteen thousand dollars. That really surprises me. This beautiful picture was made by Thomas Fletcher in Philadelphia in 1830. The guest says it was an inherited piece from her great grandmother, whose husband was from Philadelphia. The picture is believed to be a wedding present, and it was her mother's most prized possession. Thomas Fletcher was a popular American silversmith whose work appealed particularly to wealthy people. His company, Fletcher & Gardiner, made the most beautiful silver pieces between 1808 and 1842. These silver pieces can be found in museums like the Harvard Art Museum, Metropolitan Museum, and others. This picture is designed with beautiful neoclassical lines and an American eagle. It was perfect for use as a water pitcher for mint juleps. The appraiser estimated that it should be insured for $9,000. On the 16th of August, 1886, local miners discovered gold in the Klondike region of Yukon. When this news reached Seattle and San Francisco the next year, 10,000 people stampeded to the Klondike in search of gold. This migration became known as the Klondike Gold Rush of 1898. This guest, great-great-granduncle, was one of the hopefuls who made the journey for gold and fortune. The guest presented his maps, a picture of his camp, and the diary he had kept while on this mission. He was not successful in his venture and died two years later from scurvy, which he got on this adventure. The hopeful adventurer may have not found gold, but he did leave behind a treasure that was worth three to $5,000 in 2007, and four to $6,000 in 2021. The guest brought the Federal Inlaid Mahogany Games Table to the show. She inherited it from her great-aunt. It emerged during the Federal period in American history, between 1789 and 1823. As a magnificent piece of furniture, it displays a balance between functionality and aesthetics. It symbolized the elegance and refinement of the Federal period. The table was known for its versatility and functionality, the flip open revealing a flat surface for games like chess, checkers, and backgammon. Interestingly, it provides convenient storage for game pieces and cards. The appraiser values it at $3,000 to $5,000. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's wonderful. The guest brought an archive ledger and small decorative objects to the show which came to the family through their great-grandfather. Interestingly, it was a very poignant letter to his family. The ledger explains what he had given to his workers. The little decorative object attached shows how archival information was not a lot then. It's a fascinating document because it gives a picture of the Cheyenne Nation. The appraiser values it at... Four to six hundred dollars. Brought a diamond and pendant necklace to the show, which she purchased in Paris for about $800. It was crafted by renowned jewelry artisans in prestigious workshops. It symbolizes elegance, luxury, and sophistication, worn as a status symbol. It features high quality diamonds known for brilliance, and it also includes lustrous pearls, buccalati for added elegance. The appraiser values it $8,000 to $12,000. Oh. That is a nice piece. Yeah. So it's, oh it's so, goodness. it does. The guest inherited a beautiful vase from her grandmother, which came from a merchant ship that traveled to the Orient. The vase appears to have Asian origins, but it's actually made in America. While American Art Nouveau was primarily influenced by Europe, this unique example showcases the fascinating incorporation of Asian artistic elements. With unique rookwood marks, a signature, and was crafted in 1905, this piece holds a rich history within its beautiful design. It's an exquisite piece featuring beautiful birds against a salmon background. The vase has an X mark, meaning it's a seconded item, which lowers its value. $2,000 to $3,000, maybe $2,500 to $3,500 at auction. Oh. Yeah, so it's, oh it's so, goodness. it does... Called their first significant purchase at the age of 13, and it was a lamp that they still cherish. 
The guest remembered paying approximately $250 for the lamp in 1983. The appraiser suggests that the lamp's shade likely originated from Bohemia, now known as the Czech Republic, with the base possibly made in Central Europe, Austria. Surprised by the revelation, the guest learned that the lamp was part of a pair, with the other being a mermaid. Are you aware that he's one of a pair? No. There is a conventional pair to him. Okay. Very, very similar, but she is a mermaid. Oh, all right. The appraiser suggested a potential value for the lamp, estimating it could reach up to $1,000. Reacting humorously, the guest acknowledged the lamp's value, expressing satisfaction with the appraisal outcome. Okay, better than a certificate of deposit. <laughs> Holla. This exquisite piece of Murano glass holds a unique history. It was a gift to the guest father from clients who appreciated his work. Acquired in the early 1970s, it has been a cherished display in the family home, despite the guest preference for Asian and Chinese art. Identified as Veronese vase, it was crafted by the renowned glassmaking company Capelin Venini in Murano. The design inspired by a vessel in a painting by Italian painter Veronese. It was first designed by Victoria Zecchin in 1921, and he was the first director of the firm of Capelin Venini. This particular vase is a signature piece for Venini, and it was showcased at the Autumn Salon in Paris in 1922 and produced between 1925 and 1935. Its authenticity as an earlier version is confirmed by the mark on the underside, indicating its origins in Murano. Characterized by slight imperfections and an earlier color scheme, it's more of an earlier color. The later ones, most of them I think are smaller, and the colors are almost an opaline. This Murano glass vase embodies the artistic legacy of Murano and is valued at three to four thousand dollars. That's great. Yeah, super. This is an exquisite chest on chest, passed down through four generations from the owner's great grandparents in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. Crafted in the 1770s by the renowned Dunlap family of New Hampshire, it represents an exceptional example of their skilled craftsmanship. The Dunlaps were prominent cabinet makers around the time of the Revolutionary War, and their furniture pieces were highly sought after. The distinctive fan design, with its long lobes alternating with the little short lobes, is a definite Dunlap signature. This design element is seen on the top and bottom sections of this chest, creating a sense of balance and cohesion. The use of tiger maple, a favorite wood of the Dunlaps, adds a touch of luxury and warmth to the piece. Finally, rather than following the typical style of the time, which placed the bottom brasses slightly lower than the top ones, the Dunlop cabinet makers ensured that all the brasses aligned perfectly. It has its original brass hardware and classic Queen Anne legs. At auction, this piece is estimated to sell for... an $80,000. Really? Oh, how wonderful. All right, that's amazing. This fascinating object, passed down from the guest grandfather, is a rare and symbolic jade carving. Crafted in China, it depicts a mythical creature called a kilin, a symbol of good luck and longevity. The intricate design incorporates cloud and lingzi shapes, further enhancing the positive connotations. Adding another layer of the figure, the carving resembles a stack of books, representing knowledge or a box of hidden treasures. While the carving style suggests it was made in past artistic eras, the use of yellow jade and broader strokes point towards its origin in the Republic period, which is pre-1949 in China, after the fall of the Ming Dynasty in 1911. Despite not being as finely detailed as older pieces, this unique Keelan statue holds significant cultural and historical value. When it comes to the value of this item, for insurance purposes, it goes for... Somewhere around $40,000. <laughs> All right, that's amazing. This remarkable bronze carving stands out from the ordinary. Dating back to the 1860s, it's a captivating work of art crafted by the Russian artist Nikolai Liberich. 
His significance in history lies in his role during a pivotal transition away from academic sculpture. Carving vividly captures the everyday life of a hunter on horseback. Interestingly, the guest acquired this piece from her mother's house. Now, as for its retail value, it would be approximately $20,000 on a retail setting. Wow. This is a collection of Art Deco artwork related to railroads created by the artist Burn Hill. These artworks were originally featured on the cover of the Railway Age magazine between 1950 and 1956. Burnhill's art was not well received by the people at the Electromotive plant because he emphasized background details rather than focusing solely on locomotives. From what I understand, Hill liked to try to capture the essence of a railroad in his scenery. Interestingly, all this artwork was discarded by the company, but later rescued by others. This collection includes both original artwork and posters created based on the artwork. One of the artworks is hand-signed by him, as some of the others are. Notably, the images are unique and showcase various styles, including a modernist design with a bridge's shadow, European-style scenes, and serene pastel depictions of the Southwest for the Santa Fe Railroad. Overall, this collection is exceptional and intriguing for art enthusiasts. At auction, the original studies would sell for $3,000 to $4,000 a piece, the little train portraits for between $1,000 and $1,500 a piece. And the 12 posters for $24,000. Bringing the collection price to about $42,000. Yet here, a bronze dog sculpture by the sculptress Anna Hyatt Huntington, who is from Connecticut. She was a friend of the guest relative, and that's how this piece came into possession. Anna Hyatt Huntington was one of the leading American sculptors of the early 20th century, and she specialized in animal sculpture. The dog was named Echo, and this sculpture is beautifully modeled. There's a lot of details on this piece, with a wonderful patina. It's an extraordinary large size piece with great quality and a personality. At auction, this piece would sell easily for $20,000 to $30,000 range and an updated price of thirty dollars to 